This is the next in our series of Journeys in Genesis, and today we're going to be thinking about leaving the earth. It's a bit of a dramatic journey, and you'll see that it is a very dramatic story. Some people think that the story of Noah and the Ark is just a story, but we have ample evidence that there was a global flood that did happen. We're going to just see what the Bible says about that. There is a key verse we want to think about, and that is that God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Genesis 6 verse 5. So God sees. Now the world has changed from the time when God made it in the creation and the beginning where Adam and Eve were put into a beautiful garden. Man has multiplied, he's covered the face of the earth, that's what he was intended to do. But sin that started with Adam has spread now all around the world. And with that, wickedness, great wickedness, the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And the Bible says that actually God is grieved at his heart. God was so sad because of what the world had become. Violence was everywhere. Key verse here in Genesis 6 verse 11 the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. I don't know about you, but I find violence of any sort really quite upsetting. Some people thrive on it. They like to watch it. They like to watch it in films and things like that. But things were actually in a pretty tragic way on the earth. God had made everything that was good, and man was making everything bad. God made things very good, and man was making things bad, very bad. God made over the world full of life and man was killing everything causing death so you can see the contrast of what God does and what man does but there was a plan of rescue Genesis 6 verse 14 God speaks to a man and tells him to make an ark of gopher wood so one man was different one man stood out from the rest and he was somebody who was described as finding grace in God's eyes. Now God spoke to that man, and that must have been quite momentous for him. But that man listened as well. The man was given, Noah was given a tremendous job, a huge job. He was to make an ark of gopher wood, and he was given the dimensions. It was enormous. It was 150 meters long, 25 meters wide, 15 meters high. It was so big that it had three stories, three different floors inside. It was effectively a massive escape pod. Now, time was to go. Genesis 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. They built it. It was ready. Now there was an invitation. God says to them, Come. It's nice to have an invitation. It's even nicer when it's from somebody important, somebody special. Well, God was giving Noah and his family and everybody else a welcoming invitation come into the ark come into the ark and there is room for all including the animals not every single animal it was mating pairs and it was mating pairs of particular species that would then uh, would, would then populate the rest of the earth again after the ark settled but only eight people went in to the ark all the animals went in they were led brought by God to the ark but only eight people went in. Would you have gone into the ark? Well, where was the danger? What was the threat? Why would you have gone into the ark? Think about this. Genesis 7 verse 12, And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. There it is. At first when they went into the ark, there was nothing. In fact, they waited seven days and still nothing happened. But ah, then rain, rain and lots more rain. There was water that was coming down from the sky and even there was water coming up from beneath. The fountains under the earth were broken up. There was literally nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, no way of escape. And the tragedy was everything that had breath in its nostrils, every animal, uh, every creeping thing, every man, woman and child died. Now what's the point in all this? Pretty tragic story, but 
Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, And it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So we might fear death, but actually what we should do is fear something even worse. You see, the danger to the people in Noah's days wasn't very obvious. They'd never heard of this thing called rain before. It never rained before. Um, the waters come up from the ground and springs uh, watered the face of the earth. They never come from the sky. So the danger sounded utterly insane to them. They thought, why on earth would I go into the ark? It's pointless. But what you had to do was believe what God had said. It might not have sounded real, might not have sounded fair, but you had to believe it. And that takes faith. Now, faith is not just a blind faith. It is based upon good evidence. God had spoken to Noah. That was evidence enough. And Noah followed what God said. What we need to remember is that God takes sin very seriously. And God condemned the world then, flooded it with water. We have evidence of that with fossils everywhere. Proof that God doesn't just simply ignore sin or sweep it under the carpet. He takes it seriously. Now, there is good news in all of this. And again, if we look at Hebrews 11, verse 7, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. You see? they never seen rain before. There it is. Massive global flood never happened before. Had to take faith to believe it. Noah believed God's word. And he was willing to act upon that. And that was faith. Because of that, he and his family, they escaped the judgment that fell upon the whole earth. Now for us, we want to think about the Lord Jesus coming into the world and dying for sinners. What he did was he was willing to shoulder the judgment that your sins deserve and my sins deserve. Willing to pay the price. So by faith, we can now escape. Just as though it was an ark set before us and there was a door that was open. The Lord Jesus says, I am the door come in. That's an invitation. And if we choose to accept the Lord Jesus as the one who died on a cross for your sin, then you will be saved. You will have the assurance of forgiveness and know peace with God and eternal life through him. That's good news. And that's why we tell you these messages from the Bible whenever we get a chance. Question is, are you saved? If you're in the ark, you'd know you're saved. If you're trusting in the Lord Jesus, then you're saved. And next time, God willing, we'll be looking at another of these journeys in Genesis. Don't forget, all of these resources are available on our website, www.upperhillstreet.org. Thank you again for sticking with us. May God bless you.